everyone and welcome all, welcome back to my home. As you can see, I am in my Christmas version living room. I left the trail camera in the forest, placed it always in the same spot on the same tree for five months, looking at the hole in the ground where uh, in the spring the badgers gave birth to their cubs. I hope you have seen the video about it because it's very exciting. I watched it again a few days ago and yeah, it's amazing. Now, this morning I, I picked up the, the photo trap and now we are going to see what I got. This is going to be a very simple video, just a relaxing chat in front of the fireplace. So grab your coffee or glass of wine, whatever you want. I have this. It is a liquor made in central Italy. Cheers! I wear the headphone as not to disturb you with the sound of my laptop. Okay, let's start to see what I got from my trail camera. It all starts in June and one of the first catches is a baby roe deer about a month old that quickly follows its mother. The baby looks like a female. In the following days there is no sign of mother and daughter, but almost a month later, in the full mating season, a wonderful male activates the photo trap. A few days later, an apparently lonely female gives us a beautiful close-up. Passing by the camera, we can clearly see the glands on their legs, useful for olfactory communication and particularly developed in this species. We jump a month later, to find mother and daughter on a moonlight walk on a still warm September night. The little one seems to have grown a lot, completely losing the spots on the side of her back. Spots instead still present in this young male, along with the white marks on his head, exactly where he will draw his first age. It is now October, and here where I am, this is the month when hunting starts. This indicates a significant decrease in the presence of animals in the area, and obviously for me, this is not a good thing. This female, unfortunately, seems to have a bone just above her left hind leg, and this, in combination with the missed sight in, in the last month, leads me to have a bad feeling about the little female. In November, the adult female reappears. But to my happiness, this time, she's not alone, but together with her baby. I think the wounded female is exactly the mother, as in this video, she's leaking precisely where the other subject was wounded. Many of the clips I recorded are about another animal, which has been seen in this den before. I just definitely love this place, and I am very happy to be able to observe this funny animal. They seem very interested in building a new hole right under the rock on the upper left. This one is particularly engaged in cleaning the burrow by pulling out the leaves accumulated inside. This is a typical behavior of badgers. In fact, observing accumulation of leaves outside the burrow lets us know that the badgers most likely live there. Here, if badgers are not inhabitants of Barrow, most likely porcupines will be, but it may also happen that they share the same den, at least until these have pups and chase away any housemates by intimidating them with their spines, and from what I see, it should not take long. The abundance of food and absence of predators, porcupines have lost their mating season, which is why they mate just about all year round. Another potential inhabitant of this burrow is the fox, and even it in certain situations could share the burrow with badgers and porcupines, also suffering eviction if there are small baby porcupines coming in. This young fox must have seen the trail cameras in Fred. Look how cute she is. In the next video, turn up the volume and listen carefully. Oh, 
howled in the distance. And I also seem to hear the cubs howling. The fox stops for a moment to listen and then walks away. I'm surprised that in this month I have very few clips of wild boards. Usually they and the birds fill my photo trap memory cards. This time only a few clips until before October, period in which the hunt begins. I record hunter calling his dog, coming back tired. A few mushroom hunters and several curious people very interested in my photo trap. Fortunately, I didn't just capture human hunters. About small mammals, I'm very happy to have documented the presence of the red squirrel, which unfortunately I've never photographed in this forest. I got some shots on the martin, which I've never photographed in my life. And to my great surprise, I was able to observe for the first time a pair of European skunks, which I had never seen here in years. All of this is just amazing. This is what happened in five months in this corner of the forest. I'm fascinated by what surrounds me right here, just outside my door. I love this place and I will never tire of exploring it and learning more about it. Now the woods are less crowded. Hunting has ended, mushrooms are no longer growing and with the cold weather there are less people around. So it's time to replace the trade camera exactly where it was and see what happens in the next month.